I don't think there's a video game release this year that I'm more excited for than the Marvel vs. Capcom fighting collection from Capcom. This is something that I never thought we would see happen. This is a collection of some of my favorite games on one cartridge or disc or however you want to get it, maybe a digital file through Steam, but it is a collection of fantastic fighting games and today I'm going through each and every one of those games and I'm ranking them all, S through F. And we're starting chronologically with The Punisher. So let's start things off, not with a ranking, but with just a call out of appreciation to Capcom for the gallery and the music box on this collection, because there is so much incredible artwork for each and every game, everything from manuals to arcade marquees to like concept art for characters and stages and powers and abilities. It just looks incredible. If you are a fan of the Versus series, this is such such a smorgasbord of just incredible eye candy for you. But it doesn't stop there because like I said, you've got the music box as well and it just sounds amazing. Like I'm gonna be bopping the MVC2 soundtrack for months because of this. It's such a wonderful thing that Capcom does on these collections and I can't say enough how much I appreciate it. And also thank you to Capcom for providing a review copy for this game because I've got the physical pre-ordered, but when they reached out and they offered me a code, I said, you know what, I've already got the physical pre-ordered, it's okay. And they said, no, we're not going to make you wait until November to play. We're going to we're gonna send you one and you can do a review that way. So, uh, thumbs up for this collection, and spoilers, every game on this collection is worth playing. Alright, so reviews and rankings on this video are going to be moving chronologically. So we're starting with the oldest game on the list, and that would be... The Punisher, the weird outlier on this collection, but not a bad outlier by any stretch of the imagination, because while every other game in this collection is a fighting game, The Punisher revels in the fact that it is a decidedly violent beat-em-up, which, I mean, you'd expect for a game starring Frank Castle and Nicholas Fury, a.k.a. The Punisher and Nick, Nick Fury. And it's really a solid game. There's some really clever gameplay going on here, where you're able to play as Frank and you go around and you beat the crap out of the bad guys, but eventually you're also able to pick up guns and you're able to use those as your weapon because, I mean, the, the Punisher is known for his arsenal. He's not known for, you know, pillow fights or anything like that. He's known for having bazookas and AK-47s and stuff like that. He's, he's, a, he's a violent man. That's what I'm saying. He's a violent guy. The game is fantastic, though. It is a legitimately fun experience, and it's a nice breath of fresh air on this collection when everything is so fighting game heavy to get something that's a little bit different. I'm going to give the Punisher a B. It's a little bit out of place, like I said. It is appreciated, but it is out of place, and it does show its age in places, but it's not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. It's just a little bit less than some games that are on this list, and even though it is a breath of fresh air, it does stand out and does stick out a bit like a sore thumb when compared to every other game on this list. Releasing in 1994, our first arcade proper fighting game on the list is X-Men Children of the Atom. Now, the roster on this game is really solid. You get Colossus, Cyclops, Iceman, Omega Red, Psylocke, a Sentinel, Silver Samurai, Spiral Storm, and Wolverine, as well as the hidden characters Magneto, Juggernaut, and Akuma. Now, one of the nice things about this collection is you can just turn on those hidden characters and utilize them if you want to. And one of the really nice things about this is if you decide to play as Magneto, it doesn't crash on you when you beat the game like it did on other releases if you put in a code to play as Magneto via a Game Shark. It just works, which is really nice. It's a solid game. Now, it is the weakest of the batch on this list. It does set the table for everything that follows. Like, this is such an important game in the grand pantheon of the Versus series, but it just does miss the mark in a little bit of ways. The game is very cheesy. The characters are going to continuously block, and it does get to be a bit frustrating, and there isn't a sense of what the Versus games would become later on with kind of like the, the hyperactive movements and the fast action and the heavy combos or anything like that. There is a combo system in this game, but it doesn't really quite get to the level that we're gonna see in subsequent games in this series. That said, it's not a bad title. It's still really fun. If I am weighing it against the other fighting games in this collection, which is what I have to do, I have to give it a C and say it's average. And that might sound weird when I compare it to what we just talked about with The Punisher, because The Punisher isn't a fighting game and doesn't fit in with this collection, but The Punisher is something that's a little bit different, and standing on its own, I think it's a B. X-Men Children of the Atom is going to be a C. It's still a great game, but 
average when compared to the other five fighting games on this list. Moving up to the 1995 arcade release of Marvel Super Heroes, and this one fixes a lot of things that were present in X-Men Children of the Atom. First off, let's talk about the roster, and I promise you I will not talk about the roster when we get to Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I'll just provide a link down below so you can see everyone in there. But for Marvel Super Heroes, you get Blackheart, Captain America, Hulk, Iron Man, Juggernaut, Magneto, Psylocke, Shuma Garath, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Doctor Doom, Thanos, and the special unlockable character that has never been released here in the States, Anita. Now, you only get her if you play on the Japanese ROM, which is present on the collection, and the gameplay in this game does see some significant improvements. The combo system is a little bit better than it was in Children of the Atom, where I think the game struggles a little bit, and at least maybe I struggle with the game a little bit, is with the Infinity Stones that are present in the game. Now, there are, are stones you're able to pick up, and utilizing them will give you different powers or abilities, which is pretty cool if you're not like me and you can remember how to pull off the you know combos to utilize them. Yeah, I can never remember. But I do think that there's something there, and I do think it actually pluses the experience a little bit. I'm not going to say it's like this massive improvement over what we saw in Children of the Atom, but I do think that there is enough going on here that sees this one bump up from a C to a B. This is an above average experience. I loved seeing this game kind of expand to the point where we were getting not just X-Men characters, but also Marvel characters. And, you know, hey, come on. It's a telling of the Infinity Gauntlet saga, and I'm never going to be upset about that. Ready. Ready. If you were not alive in 1996, you can be forgiven for not understanding the absolute mind f that it was to see X-Men versus Street Fighter in an arcade because the idea of X-Men and Street Fighter crossing over was unheard of. Like, we had the X-Men and the Marvel Super Heroes fighting games, those were great, but I don't really think anyone ever anticipated seeing them fight each other and go against each other. And it was just a remarkable experience and something that was, like, literally game-changing. This, this completely changed the way that fighting games would be perceived and utilized going forward. This led to so much stuff. Like, I firmly believe that X-Men vs. Street Fighter is the reason that we got things like Capcom vs. SNK down the road. If it wasn't for this game, it wouldn't have happened. Now, the roster you get, the X-Men characters, you get Cyclops, Juggernaut, Magneto, Storm, Wolverine, and new characters Gambit, Rogue, and Sabretooth, as well as Street Fighter characters Ken, Bison, Ryu, Zangief, Dalsam, Chun-Li, Charlie, and Kami, as well as the moderately hidden Akuma. You just basically press up on the top, and there's Akuma if you want to use him. This game is wonderful, absolutely fantastic. We got amazing things like the crazy full-screen Hadoukens from the Street Fighter characters. The gameplay was great. It looked and ran beautifully well. The sound was fantastic. Like, there's not anything that misses on this game. I absolutely love it. I'm going to give this one an A. I understand that for some people it might be a little bit lower because we don't get a lot of the crazy hidden characters that we get in other games, but as someone who experienced this when it first released and still gets that buzz of playing this game now, this one gets an A for me. Nineteen ninety seven brought us Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter, which was a continuation basically in kind of the plussing of X Men vs. Street Fighter because we went from just X-Men characters to Marvel characters, bringing us characters like Blackheart, Captain America, Hulk, Mephisto, Shumagarath, the US Agent, and Street Fighter characters like Dan Hibiki, Akuma, Sakura, Shadow, Mecha Zangief, Dark Sakura, Armored Spider-Man, and the hidden character, available only in the Japanese ROM on the game, is Norimaru, who is a Japanese comedian. I've never used him. I just saw that he was there on someone else's video, so I know he exists. Gameplay in this one is really, really, really similar to what we got in X-Men vs. Street Fighter, which is to say, it's great. Nothing wrong with this game whatsoever. It's a really fun title. It doesn't do a whole lot different from X-Men vs. Street Fighter, so I'm kind of tempted to knock it back a little bit. But I'm going to keep it at an A, because we do get some new characters in here, and I think Capcom should be commended for that. And while the gameplay isn't terribly different, this was the first time we were able to call in our partner to do variable assists and add to our combos as we were playing. And that would become a staple in versus games going forward. Solid title. 
Ready. Fight. This right here, Marvel versus Capcom Clash of Superheroes was incredible to experience when it released in 1998. This was such a remarkable title. This was something that but uh, kind of like X-Men versus Street Fighter wasn't something that I ever really expected because there were so many characters in here from the Capcom side of things that I never thought I would see as a character in a versus fighting game. Like, I didn't expect to ever see Mega Man, never thought I'd see Captain Commando brought out of the depths, Strider was in there, like, there's so many incredible characters. Roll? Like, Roll? Really? Was anyone expecting Roll? It's such a... It's such a great stance for Capcom to take, to take a risk, to bring in characters, and to try them out in this game. And it was fun. It was just a really fun title. And they did something really interesting here in this game as well with special partners, where there was a bunch of characters that you were able to call in that weren't regularly used in the game. And I thought that was pretty neat because you got characters like Thor. That was crazy. Thor was in here that you could use. You could call in uh, characters from Cyberbots. Like, this was just incredible. It was such a neat experience and such a love letter to all things Capcom that I just couldn't help but love it. It's a magnificent game, and it still plays great to this day. And this is the first one to me that really felt like a massive leap forward from the gameplay experiences we had gotten in previous Versus games. This game is just excellent. It's not quite an S. That's reserved for the last game on this list. But to me, Marvel vs. Capcom, Clash of the Superheroes, that gets an A+. And finally, releasing in 2000 is, in my opinion, the single greatest arcade game of all time, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 New Age of Heroes. Now, I have pumped countless quarters into this game in my life. I have played this game hundreds if not thousands of hours with friends it is legitimately my favorite fighting game of all time there is no game that i have ever had more fun with than marvel vs. capcom 2 as far as a fighting game goes the roster is massive with 56 characters to choose from amazing entries original characters like amingo a cactus dude ruby heart a pirate and sansan a monkey girl she's great and a ton of Marvel characters, along with a bunch of returning Capcom characters, and new ones, like Tronbon, which I love. She's one of my favorite characters to play. It's legitimately one of the best experiences I've ever had in a multiplayer environment. It is something that just plays brilliantly well. It looks fantastic. The sound is on point. My biggest complaint with this game is that I don't get the unlock mechanic for characters that was available in the Dreamcast version. And that's, that's like the ultimate nitpick because I know this is the arcade release. So it's just going to unlock based on revenue or you can just do the quick unlock like I do. And that's all you really need. This game is magnificent. Absolutely brilliant. Wonderful. Perfect in every conceivable way. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 New Age of Heroes is an S+++++. Plus, 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 plus. There you have it, my friends. Every single game on the Capcom vs. Marvel Fighting Collection. I thought this was an unbelievable cartridge. There are some absolutely incredible games on here, and some games that maybe didn't age quite so well. What's up, X-Men Children of the Atom? But this is such a wonderful collection, something I am going to have years and years and years of fun with. Thank you to Capcom for the review code on this game. I'm super stoked for it. I've also got the physical coming in later this year in November. Got that pre-ordered, making sure I'm getting that, because I will never give up my copy of MVC2 again. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with my rankings. Keep it civil. That's the only thing I ask. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up down below. Engagement helps the channel out. And if you really enjoyed it, why don't you click subscribe, stick around for a little while. Till next time, folks, I've been Jay. Appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me. Remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.